What's up, guys? <clears throat> My name is Marco. I am a uh, legal immigrant to the United States. Uh, and I support Robert Herrera. So, hey Jennifer. I haven't had a chance to, to talk to you, Jennifer. We have to talk. We, uh, we have to do a live. Valentina. Valentina, what's up? Everybody say hi to Valentina. Uh, Lisa, how you doing, Lisa? Big day for you guys. Uh, the day after tomorrow, right? In Houston, you guys are having a big uh, freedom rally. Uh, Seventy seventy six, something like that. What's up, guys? What's up, Valentina? April Powers. Angie. Oh, Angie. What's up, Angie? I hope to see you um, in a week. Hope to see you in Sacramento on the 8th. Let's sit down. Let me see. Yeah, 10 days from now. Uh, William Trujillo, what's up? William, MAGA. I was watching my friend Robert. Uh, and then I'll, I'll tell you about it in a minute. Let me just uh, wait for some of you guys to come here. So, great day for Trump winning. His Kate Law, well, I don't know if, who did that, but Kate Law passed today. Um, and it'll pass the Senate for sure. Barron Gonzalez was asking that. If he passed Congress, he'll pass the Senate, that's for sure. And uh, let me see. Facebook has made some changes, and, and Twitter also. The Senate's next. Yeah. Win, 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 says Angie. I know, Angie, I know that's, uh, that's a touchy subject for you. Defund Sanctuary City's past house. I know. I bet you um, Arthur is really happy right now, wherever he's at. And all the all the all the um, all the guys that have been fighting in L.A. and Karahe, I bet you they're very uh, excited about that. Um, what's up, Madeline? Yeah, so I was watching Robert. Madeline, how you doing? Let me see, I'm inviting a couple of people here. Denise Reese, what's up, Denise? Denise, everybody say hi to Denise Reese. She is uh, the MAGA girl. She's, she has trademarked the MAGA girl, so she is. Uh, so Denise is gonna be making some shirts for us that um, that are gonna say what's up guys <laughs> and then I'm gonna be helping uh, helping her sell them so David what's up David uh, 
I'm gonna make some shirts that say what's up guys. Oh Angie says she wants one. Yeah. Um Adolfo, what's up, Adolfo? You don't have sound? Oh. Okay. Elena, what's up? Great. You guys like the idea to get shirts with what's up, guys? Good. I want one too. See? Man, winning, winning. I haven't even made, I haven't made the shirts and I already sold two. I want a MAGA shirt for my daughters. Great. Great. So guys, great day today. Um, everybody, especially Anna Navarro, is they're complaining. Oh, she, but Valentina wants a hat. With what's up, guys? Uh, everybody's complaining about Donald Trump tweets. Tracy. What's up, Tracy? It's been a rough week. Yes, he has. Actually, I was, today I was supposed to be in Vegas uh, to meet Robert Herrera because I was going to drive him back to LA. But there was some last minute business that I had to take care of. So I'm not going to be joining him. I might go tomorrow, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Yes, what's up guys in the front and uh, and I want to be you on the back. What's my what's a picture of a wall on the back? Okay. Kaylee from Merlin. Wow, what's up Merlin? Oh, how is Robert giving back? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, he's probably going to take the, uh, I don't know, we're gonna, uh, probably going to help him get a flight or something. But that's why I'm actually uh, reaching out to you guys. Uh, let's see. Hola, Carissa, what's up? Vanessa, como estas? How are you? Vanessa. Vanessa says, I decided to ha I decided to get a Twitter account to see my president's tweets. You know what? We all should have a Twitter account because that's really where things happen. Twitter is, is uh, where everybody nests. Everybody sort of gravitates around Twitter. Marco, go to Vegas. I'm actually thinking of going to Vegas either Saturday morning or tomorrow night to go meet Robert and bring him back to LA. And then in LA, we're going to go on Sunday, we're going to go help Harim with his uh, counter protest against the uh, impeachment rally that they have going on. Um, and then we'll drive back and get ready for next weekend here in Sacramento. Uh, Harim, uh, he, he is fine, but he is, uh, he's locked from Facebook, which is so unfair because all he was doing is he was just uh, taking live of that event. What's that? What, what's, what's Valentina saying? Good mate, what's going on with Harim's situation? I love his tweets, regardless of what anyone says. Our president has had enough backlash. You know what? I think his tweets are the only thing that we have that is genuine and that is 100% that it's him talking to us. It's like 
the last line of uh, information for us because we can still see the essence of Donald Trump in those tweets. And uh, L.A. will be huge, says Valentina. Yeah, Carissa, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you next weekend in Sacramento, and Robert will be helping us. So, just so that you know, guys, I actually uh, I've been sponsoring Robert. Love his tweets. <laughs> I've been sponsoring Robert since he came from New York a little bit, not a lot, you know, I'm not going to take credit for everything. But so right now I just put on his PayPal uh, some extra cash so that he can help himself. If it is within your means and if you can, please go help Robert. I put my, the PayPal account uh, on this live transmission. Uh, I know that some people have had problems with money in the past, helping people, and so if you can, please help Robert. Anything can help because he had to extend his stay. Robert was really just coming to help us here um, in San Bernardino, and he was going to be here uh, for a few days, and then he had to go back. But Robert extended his stay. Um, and, uh, he, he didn't plan for all this extra time. So I'm, I'm helping him out with whatever I can. And I encourage you and I, uh, if you can help, uh, please, please do, do so. Okay. Uh, and we should be in LA, uh, on Sunday and I'm going to go meet him tomorrow. So. Gotta hate cops who aren't doing their job to protect free speech. Well, the thing is that those cops, you can tell that they're very biased. You stole him. Jennifer says, I stole Robert. <laughs> no, Jennifer, we didn't steal him. Hey, Henry, what's up, Henry? Uh, Robert came out of his own wheel. He said he wanted to uh, experience California. Hey, Henry, we're making shirts with what's up, guys. David says, I love the tweets, and I hope he tweets and tweets and tweets and donate to Robert PayPal, said, and I, I said so. You know, guys, it's... It's really not a donation, it's a contribution, if you can do it, because I've been contributing to the GOP for so long, and every time the GOP calls me, they always get at least, you know, a couple hundred dollars out of me, and I always do it, but I have never got anything out of the GOP but a letter. And with Robert, what he's doing, and I've been watching Robert for so long, he's got a big follow. People like him, uh, and he extended his stay more than he was, you know, thinking of staying here. So if you can, it's not a donation, it's a, it's a participation. You're participating in his uh, journey, fighting liberals. And uh, this money situation, you know, since I started helping Trump, I have spent money out of my uh, my own money. At the beginning, I did a GoFund account and I got like thirty-five dollars, and everybody hated me for it. So I just closed my account <laughs> and I gave my thirty-five dollars back. And actually, twenty-five dollars were from my, from my wife, and ten dollars from somebody else. So I just gave the money back. <laughs> I said, I don't want to deal with this, but. Robert does uh, need our help right now, and if you can, please uh, donate. I did a little bit right now. Um, 
Who, who's laughing? Valentina's laughing? I think Valentina is the one that was criticizing me for having a PayPal. I wanted to write a book. Remember, guys, when I say, I, well, I'm writing the book. I'm writing the book anyway, but I'm going to pay for it. Um, okay, so what, what else? Let me see. Everybody get everybody gets so serious when we talk about money. So I want to Henry Grujon in New York has been doing so good. Henry, you you're very talented, man. Uh, he's been doing a, a lot of interviews with uh, Hispanic, uh, Jewish. I mean, all, um, people that are running for public office. And in fact, let me see if I can bring him up. No, I can't. Uh, I got here in 1957 and extended my stay. Pat, so you're, you're an immigrant as well? Or, or you came here to California in 1957? I really appreciate you and what you do, Carl. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. You know, guys, I got to confess to you that this has been a blessing and, and it's been... It's been a freaking spiritual awakening for me. I mean, I, I don't know how to thank you and how to tell you that this has been so freaking amazing. This, in San Bernardino. Um, and I just did a video with the pictures from San Bernardino. There was this people that came to me, older, white, uh, people, and I don't mean white in a bad way. I mean white and the people that are being under attack right now by the left. And this, this older um, Anglo white um, individuals came to me and said, Marco, it's because of you that I am here. They said, Marco, it's because of you that I get out of my couch, get a flag, and come here and fight for my country. And I just felt so freaking honored. And, and I, felt, I felt so lucky to be able to participate in our movement in that way. You know, because there is people out there that are watching us every day and that we are motivating them. We're getting them to reclaim in, in, in a way from, I'm going to speak for myself, in a way I'm helping them reclaim their country because this is, when I came here, it was your country, guys. See, these people that are telling me that they're my sponsors and I owe you a lifetime of gratitude and service because you adopted me, you sponsored me to be in your country. And I keep saying this, you guys are the founders. <laughs> you founded this country. I, I, when I came here, it was already your country. So who am I to tell you how to tell you what you know, to want to impose rules on you guys. And, and that's what I don't understand from the left. And I think that's why I'm fighting with you. And I, I just, I, I don't get it from, I don't get it from the other side, guys. Uh, David says, Team America, don't quit for nothing. You got that right, man. David, he's another guy. I mean, you should, if you don't know David, follow him. He's a, a hardcore, a patriot, you know, that I, that I, I'm, that I'm following, that I'm willing to follow anywhere. No, it's our country. Thank you, uh, uh, Fashion. The reason why I say your country is because really I was born and raised in Mexico. I came here, I became a US citizen, and, and now it's my country. But because I really feel that there's an order to things and that a lot of people are stepping the boundaries of that natural order of things. And I don't want to be one of them. 
Marco, even in America, revolution, the leaders and changes were few. You're one of those few today. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. So I know there is a lot of people out there that are demoralizing the, the base. They're demoralizing Trump supporters. Um, and I want to tell you guys today, please don't listen to that. Remember that fire that Donald Trump awakened in all of us. The reason why he won. And he won because he did not give in to all that negative crap of the media. Donald Trump stayed true to himself all the way. To the last day. Remember when he was doing those four or five rallies a day. When the media was giving 90% chances to Hillary Clinton that she was going to win. And he did not break. He stayed true to himself all the way. And that's how, that is what he gave us. And we need to continue with that. And I know there's, a, our base is having hiccups right now. We're having hiccups where there's some people that are trying to push this way and the other way. We, we need to um, come together in unity um, there is a lot of people that have a great message. There's some people that are a little angry right now. <laughs> and let's, let's stick with the winners. Let's follow the winners, guys. You have Will Johnson. You have Amber. You have uh, Gibbs, uh, uh, Joey Gibson. Um, you have this guy that is doing the more, the mother of all rallies. That, that, that's a great guy, too. You have Kyle. And those, there's other people that I'm not going to mention, but are not, are causing more um, confusion. I know they mean well, but they're causing confusion. Let's not fall for that. Uh, let me see. That's why he earned the nickname God Emperor Trump. Yeah, Trump reminds me so much of those Emperor uh, gladiators, warriors, uh, because, oh, Harim, I'm sorry, how did I forget Harim? Harim, Arthur, um, uh, Jasmina, you have Bianca, um, Alex, Gonzalez, you have Ariel, Ileana, you have so many people out there that are worth, you know, what they, uh, in, in Spanish we say, Que valen lo que pesan. They're worth what their, their, their weight. They, they're worth their weight in gold. Does that make sense? Susan Walsh. That's another one. Valentina. Wow. You know, I can't name all of you guys, but yes. Vince, David, Emily, Jasmina. Yes. Um... Does that make sense? What, what I just, Jennifer, does that make sense that you're worth your weight in gold? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Don't fall into the BS. Yeah. Let's, let's, um, let's, let's, let's take this one day at a time, 24 hours a day. I know we have a lot of events coming. Uh, there, Joey has this event in uh, Portland. Please support him with what you can. Um, the Red Elephants. Yeah. Shutters, Shutter Shot 45. You know what? I think what we should do is when I was in the bank industry. I'm still in the bank industry, but not really. Um. We had a, a, a sheet of all the banks and you know, all the information. I think somebody needs to go and create a sheet of all these patriots that have done so much. Ant Antonio Foreman, our hero. And, and have that form so that we call these guys. 
Because if you feel down, if you don't feel that, you know, if you feel confused, you don't know what's going on, you know, call one of these guys. Call me. My information is out there. I'll talk to you. I'll, I'll, I'll help you go through whatever you're going through. A lot of times it's just personal stuff, guys. Remember, we cannot take personal what other people think. Everybody has the right to make mistakes. Everybody has the right to be wrong. Some people are wrong right now. But it's the right to be wrong. Just don't participate in their wrongness. That's it. Just tell them, look, I think you're wrong. <laughs> and, and walk away and talk to one of us. And then that person is going to realize sooner or later that maybe he's doing the wrong thing. Yes, Jennifer, this is not about feelings. This is, I'm for, it's not about feelings. I mean, I, I, I appreciate your feelings, but this is not about feelings. We are trying to take our country back. It's not going to be easy, guys. Nobody said this would be easy. You know, and, and the, the thing is that the business aspect of it, it it's, it, we have to, we have to be strong when it comes to, let me see, when it comes to making decisions. You know, we have to be able to Tell our friend, you know, and this is not about friends. I know people think that we're friends. We're not friends, guys. We are members. We're in this together, but friendship is really not part of this. Friendship, yes, we can be friends. But don't expect just because we're friends, I have to agree with you when you're wrong. I should have the right, I should have the ability to tell you that you're wrong and continue to be your friend. I don't know if you guys understand what I'm talking about. I hear you and understand. Great. Awesome. <laughs> we are the silent majority of fairness. Um, yes, we are Americans working for the greater good. Exactamo. So we have a common goal and we have a primary purpose. And our primary purpose is to support Donald J. Trump and to help his agenda move forward, to make America great again. That is our primary purpose. About the rest, whether you, you know, that you want to be part of this club and this other club and this club doesn't allow this other people, that's just secondary. You know, there is, um, because if not, we're no different than the left. If not, we're no different than those people that want to walk naked on the street. I mean, they have the right to do it. But I don't have to participate in that. At least not yet. Not now, not today, maybe later. It, a Carissa says, a true friend will tell you when you're wrong. I appreciate that quality. Yes, yes. It, it, it. And you know what? Guilty myself. Guys, I mean, we, we, nobody knows everything about anything. So we should have the humility to tell people, look, I don't know what I'm doing, man. <laughs> Can you help me out here? Because um, this is getting a little crazy. I wouldn't look good in a dress, Marco. <laughs> right, I'm <saying> this. <laughs> See? But I mean, we have the right to be wrong, but we do not have to participate on that. And remember another thing. To, to forgive somebody is not to reconcile. A lot of people have done wrong things to other people in this, in this movement. Okay? And they don't want to forgive them 
Because no, I remember that a year ago, you know, he blocked me. <laughs> and that's why you don't speak to that person. Well, you know, forgiven, forgotten. You don't have to reconcile. You don't have to have dinner with that guy every day. But you can forgive them because to forgive is to throw the garbage that somebody left into your, in your heart. That is forgiveness. Valentina, I forgive you. And I forgive you because it's good for me and it's good for the movement. Right? Now, I don't forget. That doesn't mean I'm going to have dinner with you every night because now I don't know how you're going to act at the end. But we need to work together in this. I want kids and grandchildren to live without the fear and succeed in what the Lord has to give us as Americans. Thank you, Angie. Yes, guys, I have six children, so you know that I, I do this every day because of them. That, that, and, and I think that is why we're going to win. Because not to talk bad about my liberal friends, but they don't have kids, they have cats. And you know, and, and as much as they love their cats, I, I, I mean, I'm, we're going to fight a little bit harder because we have kids. And, and I don't mean this in a bad way for people who don't have kids out there, but this is about uh, it, it, our society is, is, is based on, on, on uh, Judeo-Christian values. Yesterday, the day before yesterday, there was a video about um, the Templar night, the Knights of Templar in Spain. And I wanted to download that and put it on my, um, on, on my Twitter because this fight against this Sharia fight, against Sharia law, it's been there forever. It's not like it's just today, guys. People have already died because of the oppression of uh, Islam. July 8th at the Capitol, Unite to Save California, noon. True, I have a liberal friend that don't want kids either. <laughs> No, they want cats and, and dogs, guys. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's not the same. Trust me, it's not the same. We were put in this air to procreate, guys. I don't wanna, meet, I don't wanna make anybody feel bad, but that's, that's what we're here for. And the sooner we start that, the better. Get it over with. Oh man, I, t I totally got on a topic here. <laughs> I totally got on a topic with the kids. Now I, I, I lost most of my viewers. Anyway, guys, if you can uh, send a few bucks to Robert, I was supposed to be with him today and bring him back to LA. I'm not there. I'm home because I had some last minute business to take care of. Uh, I might join him tomorrow <laughs> or the day after. But I will definitely be in LA to help you guys with uh, uh, with that counter protest uh, impeachment. Valentina has rabbits. Is that what that means? <laughs> oh no, he's telling me that I'm a rabbit. Is that, what he's saying? Is that what you're saying? Birds and bees. Yes, I am. I had four, all grown now, and three grandbabies. I've done my part. See? You know, I kind of feel bad because uh, um, my daughter, my youngest daughter, who's uh, four, um, McKenna, I, I look at her, she's so beautiful and she loves all this uh, color, she likes to color and she loves all this uh, 
princesses and ponies and all kinds of stuff and and she's she's growing and and she's gonna be like my last kid my last and I, I start to feel that that feeling of man that that's I'm growing I'm growing up and and um, life is, has happened to me you know so I, I can um, I can imagine what you feel Vanessa that your kids are grown and 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 that's it. You only have, you only get one opportunity to to raise your kids, and and the idea. Trust me, I don't wish my kids to grow their kids in an Obama administration environment, because it was freaking painful for me, guys, to go eight years growing my kids in an Obama administration environment. It was painful. Hola from Georgia. Oh, hey, Romy's. Everybody say hi to Romy's. She helped. Uh, she helped the Georgia uh, District 06. Um, Karen win that district. Makes me emotionally. My oldest will be 18. See, Jennifer. Yeah, and, and I get emotional because when I see little McKenna playing, um, you know the way it is. You have a kid, you buy the first one. You buy him all kinds of stuff, you know. But and you always sell things on the garage sale and blah blah. But the the other day we were cleaning her room and, and we're cleaning all these toys and 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 that's it. No more toys are coming into my home. Especially for boys, because the oldest that we have, Pantaleon, he is already, he's going to be seven. So toys for little boys, that's it, in my house. So, so it's, it's a beautiful, this, this experience, uh, it's a beautiful thing. And, 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 and I think we need an administration that will help us grow these kids in, in, in an environment where they don't, we don't have to be afraid. Just like, you know what, going back to what um, Morphine said, that she wants to live in a place where her, she can grow her kids without fear of nothing happening to them. Uh, Linda Hernandez says, I never paid attention to politics until Obama was attacking the church. I woke up the last three years Yes. Amen to that, Linda. And you know what? Same, <laughs> same here. I was too busy making money during the Bush administration, and 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 then when Obama came, like you know, I lost everything, went bankrupt, and all of a sudden, like, what happened? And yeah, the first, those are the signs. And and anybody, like in here, there's a lot of people that are from Cuba, like Cubans for Trump, people from Nicaragua, Jasmina, they will tell you, see, there's no negotiations with them. Those guys like Jasmina, um, Alex Gonzalez, Obama, you can't convince them of nothing. That is the beginning of communism because they have experienced communism. So they know the signs. I'm hungry. I'm going to go eat some tacos, David says. Go, David. Um, so, the Obama administration was anti-commerce. Uh, they over-regulated the hell out of all of us. Uh, they they kill the spirit. They kill the entrepreneurial spirit. They kill the confidence of Americans to succeed. The motivation. That that what makes us uh, America. They kill. The, he 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 hit the foundation of our dreams. Let's put it that way. I don't want to sound too. Um, crazy, but yet yeah, that's what they did. 
they kill the foundation of our dreams. And, and it's so freaking ironic that they call dreamers uh, dreamers because that is the last thing that the Obama wanted to allow our kids to have. It's their dreams. Guys, I don't want to go too far. Look, our, look at our millenniums right now. I have one. Do you think that is a coincidence? Do you think it's a coincidence that they call them uh, our millennials that they're on their, their, their mom's basement? It's not a coincidence. They designed that. They killed the ability of our kids to dream. And that's why they're in the basement. Because they have no confidence. They don't know what to do with themselves. You couldn't pay them to dream. They, they don't want to work. They, don't, they, 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 they just don't. So what we need to do is to go back and to, to inject motivation in them and to, to allow them to, to free them from that freaking, um, I don't know. What they did, what, what, I don't know how, it, I, and I don't even know how it happened. When I woke up one day, that was it. Kids were not dreaming anymore. Will Johnson's here. What's up, Will? Can I bring you up? So, guys, uh, say hi to Will Johnson. He's, uh, he's got great ideas. Uh, unite America first and he's the one that's helping us with with that uh, event we have on July 8th um, smartphones did that okay Okay, smartphones, maybe the technology did that. But you know what? The technology, you can even use it because look, at Donald Trump is the only person that I know that he has transcended technology. Because he, you, here you have a 70-year-old man that when he started doing business, there was not even a phone business. Business was done with a, with, you have to shake hands when he started doing business. Then, facts came, the people did business through facts. Then you had uh, uh, emails, you had the phone, then you didn't have to see the person to do business. Now you have social media, but you don't have to see or you don't even know if the person exists, you still do business with them. So if our kids got messed up with, their, with the phone system and social media, why, cannot, why can't we reach them through social media? If Donald Trump is reaching us, then that means we can reach our millennials too. And give them that the entrepreneurial spirit and make them fall in love with this country. And help them fight for their own future because really it's for them that we're doing all this right will is a great unifier yes we all is uh, i was excited when i turned 18 in 1976 got a job Moved out of my parents' home, freedom, and onwards, adulthood. Yeah, see, that, that's how it should be. And guys, I have a son, 23, 24, Michael. Smart kid. But um, he's here with us. We don't have a basement. If not, he will be in the basement. I mean, he does a lot of work. He, he, he did work for, a, for about a year. And he came back, and now he's helping me. Uh, but still, 
I, I don't I don't see the motivation that I signed myself when I was his age. I don't know if where the problem really was, but um, as I travel around the country and I've been bringing him with me for about a year, he has started to wake up. And the other day he asked me, he's like, when, when, is, <laughs> when is the next uh, Donald Trump event? He's ready to go. So in a way, everything that I'm doing is working because he is seeing that what we're doing is making a difference. He was telling me the other day that one of the Antifa guys did say that she wanted to be part of the team with the red hats. So no motivation freeloaders. The thing is that kids will not do what kids will not do what you tell them to do. They will do what you do. They imitate you. So, and I see that my son is starting to do that already. He's imitating me. He wants to build a, a page. He wants to um, he wants to create a name. He's, still, he's telling me he wants to create a name that's called Antifa for Trump, just to trigger the Antifas. And I told him that. Uh, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. So at least his mind is already working in how to help our movement and how to help push and keep this alive. Because guys, if we, <laughs> look, it's up to you and me. This will die. This movement that we created that helped elect Donald Trump will die if we don't do something about it. That's why I think a baby one. Seven hundred billion people, is that what she said, Maxim Waters? Well, there's only six billion, right? <laughs> Where did she get the <laughs> Uh, Cindy, what's up? Guys, I hope you're having a good week. Uh, I'm getting a text of something that happened. Uh, I'll, I'll check the link. Sorry, Marco. I don't know how to quit America first. Raise my son in the church to the blah, blah, blah. Antifa, anti-First Amendment. I like that. And you know what, Pat? Jasmina was saying that. That if you are afraid to express your political views, that is the beginning of communism. And in my community, in the Hispanic community, their job's done. That's why I, I, when I first came out, of, out, out there, I said, you know, they have kidnapped our communities. Because they have. They have a bunch of communities kidnapped out there that you cannot identify as a Republican or a free thinker because they will violently criticize you. They will go after you. They will ridicule. They will socially punish you for the rest of your freaking life. That's what they tried to do to me. That's why I'm telling you that. Thank God, thank God that I have a, 
understanding of who I am. I have a connection with a higher power that allows me to be free and to be of service to others without all this um, dharma, all this dharma stuff. My, vo my voice. <laughs> Univision. You know what? I Univision has been very quiet. Univision's scared right now because <laughs> they have the Univision. They know what's up. They know that they're they're next on the list, and I think that's why they're a little quiet. Man, there's so many people that don't like Univision. Look, I know they're a business, but look, this is this is my take. Uh, if I sell you a car and the freaking car doesn't work, you can sue me because I sold you a lemon. You can say, Marco, the piece of crap you sold me doesn't work. You can take me to court and probably get your money back and maybe get my business to get closed or something, right? Well, what about when I give you news? If I give you the news and I give you information and you live your life based on that information I'm giving you, you make decisions based on that. Because you take that at face value. You know, let's say I say the Russians are coming because I know that the Russians are coming and then I, I give you that information. And, and it's not true, which is what's going on with CNN. What if, look, as, 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 okay, as a real estate broker, real uh, uh, mortgage broker, if I say that the interest rates are going up and I don't have any economic indicators, I don't have any experience and where to base that out of, and you sell your house or you buy a mortgage on a higher rate based on my information and it's not true, you should be, you should be entitled to go after me because I lied to you. I think it's the same way with news. Univision is doing that. Univision is translating stuff. It's feeding people lies, deception. Pro they're programming a community into a fictional uh, world that doesn't exist. So that's what I think. I think that this news outlets out there should be responsible for f for selling a uh, distressed merchandise, distressed information, information that it's that they know or should know that is false. They know or should know that is causing damage to third parties, that my dad that is watching those news thinks that his son is a racist. Just like CNN, yeah. And, and you know, my dad, he doesn't speak English very good, he's, but he's still in the social consciousness, the, the Hispanic social consciousness, so he watches Univision and he watches Telemundo. And every time I talk to him, he looks very sad. <laughs> and he's like, well, I guess Donald Trump is going to be taken out of office. So I kind of have to tell him, look, that it's, it's, it's really not as bad as it seems. I mean, the, yes, there is things that are wrong. There's things that are happening. There is the business aspect of all this. But then there is also Jorge Ramos, 
who is magnifying and amplifying a a lie <laughs> if you you know there is lies you can stretch the truth which I do as a salesman and most salesmen out there know how to stretch the truth but Lying is different. Are you coming Sunday? Yes. Yes, Andrew. Hope you're feeling better. It's all about ratings and money. Jo Joanna. Hi, Joanna. Yes, it's all about ratings. I get you. It's, it's their business. But when this is causing harm to third parties, somebody should be responsible for that. Because, look, Alex Jones, as crazy as, crazy as, as Alex Jones is, okay? He was right when he said that CNN has risked a third world war. Because you have CNN that's pushing this Russia thing, and then you have Russia that's there. And he said, well, he, you know, Russia could potentially say, hey, can you, guys, can you guys put a leash on your dog here, CNN dog? Because I'm about to run them over. Or we're going to have a national crisis. We're going to have a problem. Right? What do you guys think? Wayne, what's up? I know it's about ratings. I know it's about money. I know that. But if I'm selling you a distressed merchandise, if I'm selling you a car that doesn't work, if I tell you this car will make 100 to, to 60 in two minutes, and the freaking car doesn't start, you don't want to say, Marco, you sold me a lemon. Okay, it was about ratings and money. I should be responsible for selling you distressed merchandise. CNN should be responsible for giving us uh, distressed information, inform non-verified information. I mean, what's the freaking difference between that and in movies we have... A fantasy and we have a science science fiction right well CNN is the freaking science fiction of the uh, of the of the theater of the movies they should be they should have a rating for science fiction news because if I go and look at a science fiction movie and I see pigs flying and I see you know, I know it's not true because it's a science fiction movie. I don't, I'm not going to expect, you know, the guy that filmed the movie to fly. Because it's classified as a science fiction movie. Well, with CNN, they should have a classification and say, you know, this is science fiction, oh, fiction news. Marco, did you know that Televisa is a majority stockholder of Univision that gives the great power in the, in the decision making? Okay, give me a second, Will. Jose, not just that, but also Televisa was looking to buy more shares. And if Hillary Clinton would have won, Televisa would have had the opportunity to get an exception from the uh, FCC or the regulating agency for the stock uh, holders that will allow them to buy more stocks. But a foreign company should not be, should, not, should own so much of a national company in the uh, news industry. Let me bring, uh, well, It's called Journalistic Standards. Hey, Will. 
What's going on? Can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. What? Yeah, yeah man, I, uh, you're absolutely right. You know, the CNN, they're, they're basically, any credit that they had, not that they had any, any credit that they had is completely gone, in my opinion. I don't even know why anyone would sit there and watch them and take anything that they're saying. So just like after the, you've seen the Veritas video, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so right after the Veritas video came out with CNN pushing a whole Russia narrative, uh, you notice, I, I, I watched CNN after that. And if you notice, CNN did not talk about Russia at all. I guess it came down from the top. Do not talk about Russia. They fired three people, and they stopped talking about Russia altogether. And then if you notice, uh, the Republicans did not get the health care bill passed. Liberals, the Democrats, the liberal media, they were doing nothing but talking uh, the health care bill, the health care bill. And what does Trump do? Trump puts out a tweet that is completely petty. You still got me? Yeah, I got you. You're facing a little bit. You there? You got, got me? You're back. You're back. Yeah. You're back. Okay. It's good. What I was saying, the Republicans could not get the health care bill passed. And that's what the media was talking about. They were trying to, you know, talk about how the, the Republicans are failing how they're not getting anything done, et cetera, et cetera. And what does Trump do? He puts out a tweet that's completely petty, that's completely meaningless, talking about a female with plastic surgery that is bleeding from a plastic surgery. And what does the media do? They drop talking about the health care bill. They drop everything else. And they're like, oh, yes, we got something to talk bad about Trump now. And that's all they're talking about. Is him making statements that are completely meaningless, that don't make any, you know, they don't, they really don't make any sense. And he knows it. He is completely playing the media. Take nothing else. And if you really think about it, these were these Republicans that are on the right, you know, and some of them sometimes are never Trumpers. They're sitting there. You know, saying, well, yeah, what he said was inappropriate. But he's actually doing them a favor by getting people not to talk about them failing. And they don't even realize it. He is playing the media just the same way he played Comey. He put out the whole thing about, you know, Comey better hope there aren't any tapes. And what does Comey do? He leaked information when he knew he shouldn't have. And the whole thing about Loretta Lynch, uh, uh, Rice, Obama, all of that started coming up out of the woodwork about how they were doing, how Russia was on the on the radar when Obama was in office. Trump is playing them like a completely playing them, and they don't even realize it. Sorry, I didn't mean to come in and just take over. No, 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 and and, and you know what? That, that's it's kind of scary because that tells you that the whole freaking establishment that that tells you how they disconnected they are because Trump is a contractor he's a builder he's a somebody who thinks like you and me he's a blue collar person who's doing who's got street smarts you can say yeah absolutely you know what to me Trump he may be a millionaire filthy rich but he acts just like the rest of us. And that's why a lot of people cling to him. He makes mistakes. He'll say stupid stuff just like the rest of us. And everyone pick up on it. I'm like, this dude is just like us, but he's filthy rich. So you know what, to me, it made it like, well, all of us can be rich like that. All of us can be rich, can be filthy rich, and still be ourselves. We don't have to you know, step up to be something that we're not just because we're filthy rich. Well, I think that it's scary that the, the mainstream media and the establishment are showing how vulnerable they are and how, how easy they are played with.
Say it again. You were cutting out. Oh, it's 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 uh, it's embarrassing for the mainstream media and the establishment to show that they can be played with. You know? Yeah. Yeah. They, they are being they are being played. Yeah. So if you're wondering, I'm actually driving right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Well, th thank you, Will. I know that. Um, I know that we have one week, right? We have what? Ten days. Yeah. We have, uh, yeah, I guess it is 10 days, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, before July the 8th. You know, I'm glad you brought it up. A lot of people, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get on, a lot of people are kind of concerned, you know, just with all the craziness going on. We are going to have security like no tomorrow there. I mean, we have a security detail coming in. There's a parking deck that people can go park their vehicles at. We're going to have security walking the parking deck making sure we're going to have security from the parking deck to the Capitol, to the event, so people can be safe. And, you know, and I encourage people to get there early so that they, so that way they can get parking in the parking deck. And not only that, um, if they're going to, if you have to park on the street, et cetera, et cetera, you know, I encourage people just to walk together. We're not anticipating any opposition we're not anticipating anybody coming out acting crazy uh this whole rally is to bring information to everybody to let everybody know what's going on that's the purpose we have to inform people what is going on i've talked to multiple people about for example the gas tax is getting ready to take place in november on november 1st 12 cent gas tax in the state of california They've already done a nonsense gas tax in the state of California. So the whole point is, is to inform people what is going on. What are they doing to the state? And, what, and, the, and the things that they're doing to the state, I guarantee it, they're going to push this onto other states. So a lot of people are saying, we just need to separate California from the rest of the country. By doing that, they just won. They've just divided this country if they are successful in doing that. You see, look what happened today. No more sanctuary cities. This, we are on a positive note. We are winning. Confete, we are winning. And we've got to keep going. Will. We've got to keep going. Yeah, go ahead. How does that work? How do you think that's going to work? No sanctuary cities when we have the sanctuary state legislation going on here. How do I think it's going to what? How is it going to work, the no sanctuary cities, with the sanctuary state legislation oh, that they passed? Oh. oh, personally, I think the, the just passed. They're going to try to go to get, they're going to try to do everything they can to prevent our president from protecting the American people. Because, see, if he can protect the American people, he's doing the right thing. He's making people feel safe and secure. They don't want that. They need people. They need, they need the destruction going on in America right now. And if they do, if they start bringing that on, they're gonna, all they're going to do is blame Donald J. Trump for any violence, any destruction, any chaos that's going on. We can't allow that. That's why we need to tell these people, you know, we're not here to fight you. We're here to bring information. We need to stop all this bickering and fighting. The elite wants us to fight. As long as we keep doing that, we lose, all of us. It doesn't matter what political spectrum you come from. But I believe that the liberal left, they're going to fight tooth and nail against Donald J. Trump from protecting us. Hmm. Confefe. Yeah. So what do you think? I mean, because, you know, they've already put it in place in California. You can run to San, San Francisco. Well, I guess you can't now, but they're going to still do it. And what's going to happen is they're going to lose federal funding, according to my understanding of the bill. They're going to lose the federal funding if, they, if they're caught doing sanctuary cities. Same thing with New York. New York was big about it. You know, her, her Robert, Robert did a video one night showing how the churches there were doing a sanctuary uh, state in New York. So once they find out that's happening, they're going to lose federal funding. I, I, I want to see what Eric, Eric Holder says about that because he's going to be working hard uh, for the next few days. Eric Holder? Yeah.
because he's going to be defending uh, California against that. Mm, yeah, that's going to be interesting. I'm not sure how they're going to spin it. Well, I, I mean, I can't imagine they're going to spin it as this is completely racist, that you're going against uh, good, decent, innocent, working people. But that's not what it's about. It's about people that are committing crimes, violent crimes at that. You know, people come here every year, every day, and people want to do the right thing. But when people come and they're bringing harm, and we know that they're going to bring harm, we have to do everything we can to stop them from doing that. And you know what? If if, if we do get people coming over here and they wanted to and they're wanting to bomb us, destroy us, go to our malls, go to the supermarkets, run people down with their vehicles, strap bombs on their children, and trying to kill people. You know what that's going to do? They're going to blame Trump. They're going to say because his 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 phobias, you want to list all of them, is the reason why people are doing this. And that's what we need to stop. I've seen that in Texas, the way they're responding, uh, the Hispanic community, they've been doing a couple of uh, protests against uh, SB, I think it's SB4 over there. Um, and yeah, and I've been fighting with them because that's the first thing they say, that it's race. It's a racist law. Yeah. And I, I tell them, okay, it might not be fair for that particular community, but that is not racist. It doesn't have anything to do with race. It's about the law. Yeah, well, they all say it's racist. But, you know, when it's something that they can spin, you know, to, to make it look like it's racist, that's... That's what they do. When it, when it's something that we should be doing, for example, you know, putting up a wall, the same reason why we have walls on the house, the same reason we lock our doors in the evening. It's not the, you know, to keep good people out. It's to protect the people inside. You know? And, and, and I, th I think they, 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 they get it, but they, they want to, they know that, that that triggers a lot of us and and, you know, it's sad that there's 40 million people that are Univision keeps them on because Univision is the one that is televising all this stuff. And, and they have a bunch of attorneys that are milking this. They're capitalizing on this, on scaring these people. And they're just making a lot of money out of it. Yeah. I mean, the same thing with CNN. CNN was doing the same thing. And as long as they have easily brainwashed people to watch it, and to feed into the whole narrative, they're going to continue doing it. I mean, why stop doing something if you're bringing in millions of dollars? Look at Planned Parenthood. I mean, as long as they can, you know, harvest these carcasses to make money from it, why stop it? Especially if no one's going to stop them. And the people that's helping them do it, these politicians, they're making money from it as well. So why stop them? I mean, you're talking about multi-million dollars. That's hard to stop. It's hard to stop that. Because because you have people at the top making money from it. Yeah, and I think that's what it is. All this sanctuary thing, it's who's going to get that money? Because the people that are going to be helped with, with this, because they're raising a lot of money. I think LA raised like $12 million that they have ready to fight this law. Really? And, and then San Francisco is already working on it, too. See, that's so just crazy. So there's big funds out there. And, and where is this money going to go to? Is that money really going to go to a, a, a nice family that, that goes to church every, every, every Sunday? No, that money is going to go to a repeated offender. Yeah. Yeah. That, that needs it, to be dealt is. with. It is. That's exactly where it's going to go. And the reason why they're doing it, because they want to defy the president. They want, they want America to fall, to fail, to no longer be sovereign. And as long as they can, you know, as long as they're not getting what they want. I mean, that's where we are. That's where we are. We are in a state right now where they will do anything to allow or to destroy this country because they're not getting what they want. Remember I told you that what my dad told me? That... Some people will burn the house, their house used to see your scotch on fire. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. 
well, th this is it's coming to pass. I mean, that's what these people are doing. They'd rather see America go down than, than help. Yeah, I mean, I see it. They'd rather burn it down than allow Trump to be successful in protecting us. Man. Okay, well, um, yeah, I'm I'm parking. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, oh wait. <laughs> Let's see. Craziness. Good, bottom buddy? line. We... Go ahead. I can hear you. No, what I'm what I'm saying is, uh, there is. We're here because things have gotten to a point where something needs to be done. Obviously, if there wasn't, if things would, would, would be working normal, this sanctuary uh, uh, attack or whatever they're doing to Trump, obviously we got here because there was crime going on. You have, if you see that at the White House, uh, Donald Trump had this guy, what's his name, uh, Shamil. And Shamil. You remember Shamil, his kid was killed outside his house. Where was this at? By Chicago? an illegal immigrant. Uh, a couple of days ago, or yesterday, Shamil was at the White House. And Shamil has been going around with Donald Trump on these rallies, um, raising awareness uh, you know, that he did lose his, his son uh, to an illegal immigrant for no reason. He was a teenager. So there's the, things have happened that have triggered for, for, for this uh, immigration legislature to pass. Oh, Jamal. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, Jamal. I'm not yeah I'm, I'm not too familiar with that one. You boys are cute. I could squeeze you all. Wow. <laughs> Say what? Thank you Will and Mark. <laughs> so I'm Will this I know that this this event that you planning or that we're planning it's it's going to be a huge thing man. Um, you know what? I think so. We actually got confirmation that uh, Travis Allen, who is running against Brown, Governor Brown, we, we actually got confirmation from him that he will be there at our event, Travis Allen. Awesome. So that's pretty awesome. I don't know if uh, a lot of people know who Travis Allen is, but you can just Google his name and you will see he's, he's pretty, uh, he's pretty, he's pretty uh, vibrant or He's pretty active in, in the movement. Was he there on March 4th? Uh, yeah, actually, he did. He was, huh? Yeah, yeah I he remember did him. show up. He did show up, yeah. So, but I know quite a few people weren't there at the time, but this time, um, he, he's, uh, I think he's going to be there early. So, if you're in the state of, if you're in the state of California, I mean, you really got to get out and support. And like I said before, this is not just to, you know, attack a certain group of people, a certain party, or any of that. This is to bring everybody together and talk about the issues that's affecting us all. You know, I don't know why so a lot of these people, they like to have these, uh, these uh, rallies where they're fighting with each other. That's not what this is about. We're the complete opposite. I don't care about all the fighting. I don't care about all the big bickering. Um, we, we're trying to be informative. Now, do I dislike some of the stuff that the left does? Yeah, there's stuff that the right does that I dislike. I speak out more against the right. I mean, I'm sorry, I speak out more against the left because the left, in my opinion, want to destroy the country. So hopefully we can get a lot of people that are on the left that will come out and just at least just listen. And you know what? I'm willing to listen. We have to have dialogue. We have to talk to each other. And, you know, just to, just to be clear, not everybody on the left wants to destroy America. 
I want to make sure I'm clear on that because a lot of people think, well, well, you're just hating on the left in general. No, it's just majority of the people that do the hating comes from the left. And there's a lot of people on the left waking up saying they don't even want to be a part of that any longer. They, I've had people send me messages saying, well, you're absolutely right. I can no longer participate, you know, and, and calling myself a Democrat even. They say, I can't do it anymore. They said, I'm ashamed to call myself a Democrat because of what they're doing, what they've done to the party. And it's actually, it's not what they're doing, what they've done to the party. It's just people are waking up and they're realizing what the Democratic Party is truly about. What they I mean, have already, what they done yeah. already. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, look, BLM, KKK, Black Panthers, Antifa, the Weathermen, or the Weather Underground, um, BAM, Black Bloc, and now ISIS. The Liberal Democratic Party has either complete, they, they have either created those groups or they support them. And every single one of those hateful groups are supported by the liberal left. And that's what a lot of people don't even realize. It. And it really dawned on me when I was talking to Andre Press that it, he, he brought it up. And I was like, dude, I didn't even think of that. I don't know why I didn't think about it. But every last one of these hateful groups were either created or they're supported by the liberal Democratic Party. Every last one of them. And a lot of people don't even realize it. They don't even want to wake up to it. Yeah, they, they adopt them even with even with all they the started calling you. Even with all the Hispanic uh protesters. That's Trump. That's Trump. That's the red phone calling you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh I think it's a, a collector. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, even They're always collecting. <laughs> even all the the Hispanic groups, I I'm, I was trying to see that why all of them end up on their side. They all end up on the other side. Well, well, you know, I, yeah, a lot of it because they don't want to hear, you know, because they get what's been fed to them. For example, what, what's been fed to them through CNN. Whatever's been fed to, through CNN, they take it in. Soon as CNN, Univision, MSNBC, ABC, CBS, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Washington Post, all of them, every last one of them, just like that, hate for groups all go against the president, all want to destroy America if they're not going to get what they want. That's just it. Plain and simple. Every last one of them have the same agenda. And that's why a lot of people believe everything that they say, because if all of them are saying the same thing, it must be true. Yes, exactly. Same thing. Same thing with the colleges. All of the colleges are teaching all this craziness, so it must be true. So they're all sucking it in and they're running with it. I I did not know how messed up the 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 younger generation is until I started following Trump because my own daughter starts uh, things they didn't like that I was doing and then I'm like oh my God what's going on I mean yeah. I I see it at home I mean and I'm I'm pretty sure that a lot of us see it at home too yep yep so we have a we have a job to do uh, and I'm uh, I'm willing able and ready. Uh, well, to, to help out in whatever I can. All right. Well, man, I want you to be there. Like I said, you're going to be there July 8th. Come there. Speak your voice. Share your voice. Share your story. You know, I know all the speakers. We have so many speakers lined up that, you know, we have to limit everybody to 10 minutes because we want to make sure everyone is heard. Everyone can get their uh, get what they're going to say put out there because it's so important that we inform people. You know, one thing, another thing I've been doing, and because I, I get tired. So I give you an example. The United America First Peace Rally is going to, and why I keep saying this, for information to inform people. We're going to have pamphlet to where, for all the speakers that come. We're going to have their names in there, how you can reach them, and the topic that they talked about. So that way, and then we're going to have information on how people can act on what we're talking about. Because what I hate and what's been a real big problem, what's been turned off to people is they go to these rallies and to these marches and they just go and they leave. And then they say, yeah, I was there. And that was it. We need to inform people. We need to have, we need to give people tools for them to have for when they leave action plan. And, you know, just like I've been putting on my Facebook wall to, 
uh, you know, call to action, reaching out, call these uh, senators and these congressmen and ask them, what are you doing to unite America? What are you doing to stop this division? I mean, these are things, I'm trying to think of things that we can do that are simple to, to, to try to make a difference, to let these politicians know that we are paying attention to them because we are the ones they work for. They are public servants. They are not public kings. They work for us. And we need to let them know, I am watching, I am paying attention. And I'm going to speak out about you if you don't start doing the right thing and start uniting the country behind our current president. Because that's the same thing they would have been screaming when, or that's the same thing they were screaming when Obama was in office. And if they get another Democrat in office, that's the same thing they're going to be screaming, united with our president. So they need to put up or shut up. Hmm. So the whole thing, the rally is to be informative. We're going to hand out brochures and people, if you come, we're going to try to give you tools, places to, you know, places you can go, people you can call. What can I do? I always hear that. Well, what can we do? Go to my, well, one thing I do is go to my wall, call to action. I try to do one every single day. Well, I'm glad, every day. I'm glad you said, you talk about that because for the longest time I've been trying to find a source or, or, or a, a, an information booth or a, somebody that will tell me what's next or how I can, uh, how, how I can participate. So I, I'm pretty sure there's yeah. thousands so, of people out there that want the same yeah. thing. But you're already doing that. You, you're giving a, a platform for people to, to touch bases, to, to go yeah, and look for info. Yeah, I mean, because I don't know, you know, because I'm in the same position. Before I started doing the videos and stuff, I'm like, I don't know what to do. So all I know to do is to speak out. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm, I get multiple people saying, what, what do we do? And I didn't know either, you know? So I started talking to you and different people and just start thinking, like, when we go to these rallies and go to the marches, we have to give people tools. We have to inform them. We have to give them information. Especially? We, to give it to them. we just can't sit there. We can't even talk about it. We can't just go to the rallies. We have to give it to them. Go ahead. Especially when they go back home, when they go back to their school, when they go back to their communities, they need information to fight, not to fight with them, but to, to justify what they're doing. Exactly. It's lonely out there. A lot exactly. of people call me and say, Marco, I don't know what to do, you know? Exactly. So imagine you go to, a, to, a, to the rally, you hear the speakers, and then you get a pamphlet of all the speakers that were there and more information about who you can call, what you can do, steps, actions that you can take. And then you can take it and say, you can show it to people, not to be confrontational, not to get in a fight with them and say, but look, I have some information because information is power. We have to have this. We have to do this. Awesome. We have to. It's going to hey. be a great, it's going to be a great, uh, yes, a great it's Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Even, you know, it'd be a great event if we get 10 people. It's going to be a great event. If we get a 500 people, it's a great event. I'm going to try to have Robert Herrera there. I have to go get him. He's in, uh, in, in Vegas. Ah, if you can find him, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, I'm going to get off. I'm going right. to get off. Hey, it's been really good. Thanks for bringing me on. Thank you, man. Hey, guys. So, guys, that was Will Johnson. And uh, if you don't know who Will Johnson is, please follow him. Uh, I first saw Will Johnson on March 4th. Yeah. And then uh, I started watching his videos. And this guy, I mean, he <laughs> some, of, some of his videos, some of Will Johnson's videos had like 400 thousand views and I was like wow what's going what's what's up with this guy so then I started um, I know him now I've had a personally I had a we had coffee the other day and it's great it's great to know Trump supporters because we're we think alike um, let me see <laughs> Iwini says that Robert is in Vegas eating transgender breakfast eggs. Wow, sounds like a 
great item on the menu. <laughs> so, uh, Will Johnson, I, 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 I see what he's doing, and, and it's, it's hard. It's hard because the formula to make enemies is to speak up your truth. You know, dress nice, uh, be sure of yourself, speak the truth, and enemies just come up out of everywhere. So I know there's a lot of opposition that Will Johnson is facing. There's a lot of opposition, violent opposition that I'm facing. There's a lot of violent opposition that all Trump supporters are facing out there. Uh, so we need to stick with each other. We need to help each other. And this uh, event on July 8th in Sacramento, it's a great opportunity for us to practice unity. And uh, so guys, let's be nice to each other. Whenever you see somebody, be nice. Uh, everybody's fighting their own fight. Uh, I think Socrates said that. Some, some Greek guy said that. Be kind. Because we are all fighting our, our own, own internal battles every day. If you had a... In this movement, we're going to have good days. And we're going to have bad days. So, if you had a good day today, great, keep it up. If you had a bad day today, please know that you're not alone. Okay? My information's out there. Call me, send me a text, I'll get back to you. Will Johnson is out there. We're here, and we're going to continue to fight for what is right. Thank you for uh, watching me today. I know I went longer than usual, but there was just so much to talk about today. I wish I could go to Sacramento to join you all. God bless you all. Thank you. Sarita, one day we'll meet for sure. But if you, if you can't be there, please share, go to our page and share the uh, event so that other people know about it. Uh, send us a word of encouragement. Uh, you, you might not be able to be there physically, but I know you're there in spirit. And I know you wish as well. So thank you. Uh, everybody on this thread are the type of people that make America great in this country. Thank you, Donald. Uh, where's the address? I'll, I'll put it up there in a minute. So guys, thank you so much. Struggles like this bring out the best and the worst of everybody. The trick is to encourage the best and control the worst. Wow, that's a great quote. Guys, thank you so much. I love you, and uh, remember, we're going to have um, shirts that say, what's up, guys? <laughs> what's up, guys? Uh, prayers, North California. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. God bless, and talk to you soon. What's up, guys? <clears throat> My name is Marco. 
I am a uh, legal immigrant to the United States. Uh, and I support Robert Herrera. So, hey Jennifer. I haven't had a chance to, to talk to you, Jennifer. We have to talk. We, uh, we have to do a live. Valentina. Valentina, what's up? Everybody say hi to Valentina. Uh, Lisa. How you doing, Lisa? Big day for you guys. Uh, the day after tomorrow, right? In Houston. You guys are having a big uh, freedom rally. Uh, 7076, something like that. What's up, guys? What's up, Valentina? April Powers. Angie. Oh, Angie. What's up, Angie? I hope to see you uh, in a week. Hope to see you in Sacramento on the 8th. Let's sit down. Let me see. Yeah, 10 days from now. Uh, William Trujillo, what's up? William, MAGA. I was watching my friend Robert. Uh, and then I'll, I'll tell you about it in a minute. Let me just uh, wait for some of you guys to come here. So, great day for Trump winning. His Kate Law, well, I don't know if, who did that, but Kate Law passed today. Um, and he'll pass the Senate for sure. Barron Gonzalez was asking that. If he passed Congress, he'll pass the Senate, that's for sure. And uh, let me see. Facebook has made some changes, and, and Twitter also. The Senate's next. Yeah. Win, 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 says Angie. I know, Angie. I know that's, uh, that's a touchy subject for you. Defund Sanctuary City's past house. I know. I bet you um, Arthur is really happy right now, wherever he's at. And all the all the all the um, all the guys that have been fighting in L.A. and Karahe, I bet you they're very uh, excited about that. Um, what's up, Madeline? Yeah, so I was watching Robert. I don't know. We're gonna uh, probably gonna help him get a flight or something. But that's why I'm actually uh, reaching out, to you guys. Uh, let's see. Hola, Carissa. What's up? Vanessa, ¿cómo estás? How are you? Vanessa. Vanessa says, I decided. To have, I decided to get a Twitter account to see my president's tweets. You know what? We all should have a Twitter account because that's really where things happen. Twitter is, is uh, where everybody nests. Everybody sort of gravitates around Twitter. Marco, go to Vegas. I'm actually thinking of going to Vegas either Saturday morning or tomorrow night to go meet Robert and bring him back to L.A. And then in L.A. we're going to go on Sunday, we're going to go help Harim with his uh, counter protest against the uh, impeachment rally that they have going on. Um, and then we'll drive back and get ready for 
next weekend here in Sacramento. Uh, Harim, uh, he he is fine, but he is uh, he's locked from Facebook, which is so unfair because all he was doing is he was just uh, taking live of that event. What's up? What's, what's Valentina saying? Good mate. What's going on with Harim's situation? I love his tweets, regardless of what anyone says. Our president has had enough backlash. You know what? I think his tweets are the only thing that we have that is genuine and that is a hundred percent that it's him talking to us. It's like the last line of uh, information for us because we can still see the essence of Donald Trump in those tweets. And uh, LA will be huge, says Valentina. Yeah, Carissa, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you next weekend in Sacramento, and Robert will be helping us. So, just so that you know, guys, I actually uh, I've been sponsoring Robert. Love his tweets. <laughs> I've been sponsoring Robert since he came from New York a little bit, not a lot. You know, I'm not going to take credit for everything. But so right now I just put on his PayPal uh, some extra cash so that he can help himself. If it is within your means and if you can, please go help Robert. I put my, the PayPal account uh, on this live transmission. Uh, I know that some people have had problems with money in the past, helping. But, well, I'm writing the book. I'm writing the book anyway, but I'm going to pay for it. Um, okay, so what, what else? Let me see. Everybody, get, everybody gets so serious when we talk about money. So I want to, Henry Grillon in New York has been doing so good. Henry, you're, you're very talented, man. Uh, he's been doing a, a lot of interviews with uh, Hispanic, uh, Jewish, I mean, of all, um, people that are running for public office. And in fact, let me see if I can bring him up. No, I can't. Uh, I got here in 1957 and extended my stay. Pat, so you're, you're an immigrant as well? Or no, oh, you came here to California in 1957. I really appreciate you and what you do, Carl. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. You know, guys, I got to confess to you, that this has been a blessing and, and it's been... It's been a freaking spiritual awakening for me. I mean, I, I don't know how to thank you and how to tell you that this has been so freaking amazing. This, in San Bernardino. Um, and I just did a video with the pictures from San Bernardino. There was this people that came to me, older, white, uh, people, and I don't mean white in a bad way. I mean white and the people that are being under attack right now by the left. And this, this older um, Anglo white um, individuals came to me and said, Marco, it's because of you that I am here. They said, Marco, it's because of you that I get out of my couch, get a flag, and come here and fight for my country. And I just felt so freaking honored. And, and I, felt, I felt so lucky to be able 
to participate in our movement in that way. You know, because there is people out there that are watching us every day and that we are motivating them we getting them to reclaim in, in, in a way from I'm gonna speak for myself in a way I'm helping them reclaim their country because this is when I came here it was your country guys see these people that are telling me that they're my sponsors and I owe you a lifetime of gratitude and service because you adopted me you sponsored me to be in your country And I keep saying this, you guys are the founders. <laughs> you founded this country. I, I, when I came here, it was already your country. So who am I to tell you how, to tell you what? Madeline, how you doing? Let me see, I'm inviting a couple of people here. Denise Reese, what's up, Denise? Denise, everybody say hi to Denise Reese. She is uh, the MAGA girl. She's, she has trademarked the MAGA girl, so she is. Uh, so Denise is gonna be making some shirts for us that um, that are gonna say what's up guys <laughs> and then I'm gonna be helping uh, helping her sell them so David what's up David uh, I'm gonna make some shirts that say what's up guys oh Angie says she wants one yeah um, Adolfo what's up Adolfo You don't have sound? Oh. Okay. Elena, what's up? Great. You guys like the idea to get shirts with what's up, guys? Good. I want one too. See? Man, winning, winning. I haven't even made, I haven't made the shirts and I already sold two. I want a MAGA shirt for my daughters. Great. Great. So guys, great day today. Um, everybody, especially Anna Navarro, is, they're complaining. Oh, she, but Valentina wants a hat. With what's up, guys? Uh, Everybody's complaining about Donald Trump tweets. Tracy. What's up, Tracy? It's been a rough week. Yes, it has. Actually, I was, today I was supposed to be in Vegas uh, to meet Robert Herrera because I was gonna drive him back to LA. But there was some last minute business that I had to take care of. So I'm not gonna be joining him. I might go tomorrow, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Yes, what's up guys in the front? And uh, and I want to be you on the back. What's my, what's a picture of a wall on the back? Okay. Kaylee from Maryland. Wow, what's up, Marilyn? Oh, how is Robert getting back? <laughs> uh, well, he's probably gonna take the uh, people and so if you can, please help Robert. Anything can help. 
because he had to extend his stay. Robert was really just coming to help us here um, in San Bernardino. And he was going to be here uh, for a few days, and then he had to go back. But Robert extended his stay. Um, and uh, he, he didn't plan for all this extra time. So I'm, I'm helping him out with whatever I can, and I encourage you, and I, uh, if you can help, uh, please, please do, do so, okay? Uh, and we should be in L.A. Uh, on Sunday, and I'm going to go meet him tomorrow. So, kind of hey, cops weren't doing their job to protect free speech. Well, the thing is that those cops, you can tell that they're very biased. You stole him. Jennifer says, I stole Robert. <laughs> no, Jennifer, we didn't steal him. Hey, Henry, what's up, Henry? Uh, Robert came uh, out of his own wheel. He said he wanted to uh, experience California. Hey, Henry, we're making shares with WhatsApp, guys. David says, I love the tweets, and I hope he tweets and tweets and tweets and donate to Robert PayPal, say, and I, I said so. You know, guys, it's, it's really not a donation. It's a contribution, if you can do it, because... I've been contributing to the GOP for so long, and every time the GOP calls me, they always get at least, you know, a couple hundred dollars out of me. And I always do it, but I have never got anything out of the GOP but a letter. And with Robert, what he's doing, and I've been watching Robert for so long, he's got a big follow. People like him. Uh, and he extended his stay more than he was you know, thinking and staying here. So if you can, it's not a donation, it's a, it's a participation. You're participating in his uh, journey fighting liberals. And uh, this money situation, you know, since I started helping Trump, I have spent money out of my, uh, my own money at the beginning, I did a GoFund account, and I got like $35, and everybody hated me for it, so I just closed my account, <laughs> and I gave my $35 back, and actually, $25 were from my, from my wife, and $10 from somebody else, so I just gave the money back, <laughs> and I said, I don't want to deal with this, but Robert does uh, need our help right now. And if you can, please uh, donate. I did a little bit right now. Um, who, who's laughing? <laughs> Valentina's laughing? I think Valentina is the one that was criticizing me for having a PayPal. I wanted to write a book. Remember, guys, when I say 